so today it is book haul time because I was doing really well at not spending lots of money on books and then I went mad and bought a lot so I spent a lot of money in a short space of time and I've got a lovely pile as you can see some of them here so let's get cracking why did I say that? I never say that. Firstly, we're gonna discuss arcs, cause got some arcs for you from Little Brown, the wonderful, wonderful people at Little Brown. We have the Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. And when they were like, yo, Ren, wanna read a book? Wanna review it for us? And I was like, sure, what is it? And this book, I can't show you anything in it. It's an, it's an unfinished copy. But it was, I can tell you this, this is the blurb. That uh, it's about a man who runs a bookshop on a barge in Paris. And this bookshop is described as a literary apothecary. And those words sounded so beautiful. I emailed back, yes, send me this book. It sounds amazing. It's a book about books and I want to read it. So I am halfway through it at the moment. And there'll be a review of it up soon on here on my blog. You should go and do that, read them, because um, it's very good so far. And then also Little Brown sent me California by Eden Leb Pucky Pucky Pew Pucky. Blurb of this says Consumed by fear of the future and mourning for a past they can't reclaim, Cal and Frida build a tentative existence for themselves in the wilderness, but everything is thrown into doubt when Frida finds out she's pregnant. Unsure of their ability to raise a child alone, they set out for the nearest settlement, a guarded community with dark secrets which offers security, but also poses its own dangers. In this unfamiliar world where everything and everyone can be perceived as a threat, the couple must dis quickly decide whom to trust. Sounded really cool, really wanted to read it. The review of this will be up on April 20th uh, as it's part of the blog tour that they're doing because be, it'll be on my blog and then I'll probably do a review on here as well. Sounded really cool, really excited to read it. It'll be the book I read after Little Paris Bookshop. Yes, this is out April 16th and this is out April 23rd. You should put them on your wish list and get them. Next we have a book that I've already read and there will be a review of this up soon and that is This Book Is Gay by James Dawson which is absolutely wonderful and amazing and just brilliant and one of the best books that I've read in a very long time. This book is a non-fictious self-help kind of book about the LGBTQ plus community and James Dawson talks to people that are part of that community and he himself is gay so he talks about his own experiences and then writes about other people's and gives lots of help and advice to people and also people that aren't in this community. It's very eye-opening, very educational, teaches you a lot of stuff. Thought it was brilliant. James Dawson is also incredibly funny and he made this book, like, I cry laughed at points of this book in public. It, it's fantastic. So I would definitely recommend going to read this. It's amazing. I really, really liked it. I'll do a more in-depth review of it very soon, but yeah, please go and check it out. It's so good. <laughs> and we have Unspeakable by Abby Rushton and it's about a girl Megan, she doesn't speak. She meets this new girl who starts school called Jasmine and it's their their friendship and kind of them getting to know each other and Becky has read it and she said there's a big twist. So I'm really intrigued. It's supposed to be amazing and I this tagline is some secrets are too dangerous to be told. And I'm really looking forward to reading it and finding out what it's about. And I got a, another non-fiction book and that's Stephen Hawking, A Brief History of Time. Ever since I went to see The Theory of Everything, which is an incredible film, just amazing, I really wanted to read this and I know it's gonna just make me think too much about the universe and everything that's in it, but I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading it and really looking forward to seeing about what he thought and his work because I've never read any of his work before and I did philosophy for two years and a module in it in psychology and I never read any of Stephen Hawking's book. I've read other people's and I did lots of stuff on other people's work but never Stephen Hawking so I am very excited to read this. I've got to admit I did a bit of judging a book by its cover with this one and I bought Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. Is that how Haig? Yeah, is that right? It's on fiction and it says, age 24, Matt Haig's world cave in, caved in. He could see no way to go on living. This is a true story of how he came through a crisis, crisis, triumph over an illness that almost destroyed him and learned to live again. And I immediately picked it up and said, I'm gonna get this one, I'm gonna go buy it now. And I really, really am looking forward to 
starting it and reading more about his story. Then I bought a book which was from the kids section but I don't believe in age restrictions on books and putting them in categories. Gonna do a video on that. Uh, but it's A Boy Called Hope by Lara Williamson and I read the back of this. I liked the cover, it looked really pretty so I picked it up. I'm really bad at doing that. So I picked it up and it said I'm Dan Hope and deep inside my head I keep a list of things I want to come true. For example, I want my sister, Ninja Grace, to go to university at the North Pole and only come back once a year. I want to help Sherlock Holmes solve his most daring mystery yet, and if he could be a zombie mystery, all the more exciting. I want to be the first 11 year old to land on the moon. I want my dog to stop eating the planets and throwing them up on the carpet. And finally, the biggest dream of all, I want my dad to love me. And it just... I want to read it! <laughs> it's out in the front, it says sometimes a little bit of hope can go a long way and even though it's technically in the kids section I consider like a kids book and like for a younger audience I don't care because I think Wonder is also in that section and that's an incredible book. Harry Potter is in the section with this book. They're amazing. So is Percy Jackson. I just I don't think there should be kind of like categorised sections and I really wanted to read this, it sounds like a really good story, it's very interesting and intriguing and it's from this young boy's point of view and I really want to read it and I'm really interested in reading it. The book and the back and all the kind of blurb and stuff has really drawn me in so I'm looking forward to starting it. Then another non-fiction book, what, what am I doing? I got I Think Therefore I Am by Leslie Levine, 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 can't pronounce anything today uh, and this is a book which is just going to mess with my head because it's another philosophy book and on the back it says does, fall does a falling tree make a sound if no one's around to hear it yeah it does but how do you know the cat does it you weren't there like i know that it does but i can't prove it it's not falsifiable and that annoys me and this just reminds me of my first ever philosophy lesson first day available went in how to pen what's this it's pen how do you know? Because it's a pen. Yeah, but how do you know it's a pen? It might not be a pen. Someone's told you it's a pen, but it might not be a pen. And then I just led on the floor when I got back, just crying, thinking about the universe. So this book's probably going to do that to me, but me and Becky got into a really philosophical mood and we were just talking about all these things and then we went shopping. And this is like, I wanted to like read it, I wanted to get back into philosophy because like I said, I did loads of modules on it last year and I did A-level so I like it and I'm looking forward to reading it. Then I got Still Alice by Lisa Genova. It's about a woman called Alice who finds out that she has Alzheimer's disease and it's her dealing with that and her family dealing with that and all of the consequences and things that come from that. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading this book. I think it's going to be amazing. The film got all the Oscar buzz and all that kind of stuff and she won and I just think if it's as any you know if it's books are normally better than the films so um, it's gonna be good then Becky because she's lovely got me a bunch of gave me a bunch of books um, and one of those was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn because I never jumped on the bandwagon or read it or watched it so maybe I should start then she also got me Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass which is the first book in the series never read it everyone hates me for it why haven't you, why haven't you read Throne of Glass? You need to read this series, you need to read this series, it's really good, okay, okay, I'll get on it, I'll get on it now. I think the last series I actually read was the Mortal Instruments, so I probably should start a new one, and I'm really looking forward to this, because I've just heard so many good things about it. And she gave me the first phone call from Heaven by the Mitch Album, and I have read one of his other books, which I read for Philosophy, a level, keep mentioning that. Um, and I thought it was brilliant and he was a really good writer and I really kind of liked the things that he wrote about and what he did and the way the book made me think. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one as well. I think that it's going to be very good. I really like him as an author. Then, a uh, bit weird this book. This is supposed to be Hitler and that's what I thought when I first saw it. This is this has got to be Hitler. Um, so I picked it up and read the back obviously, drew me in. Uh, and it says he's back, Berlin, summer 2011. Adolf Hitler wakes up on a patch of open ground, alive and well. Things have changed, no Eva Braun, no Nazi party, no war. Hitler barely recognises his beloved fatherland, filled with immigrants and run by a woman. And he's furious. <laughs> Funny. People certainly recognise him, albeit as a flawless impersonator who refuses to break character. The unthinkable, the inevitable happens. And the ranting Hitler goes viral, becomes a YouTube star, gets his own TV show and people begin to listen. 
but the Fiera has another program with great, even greater ambition to set the country he finds shambles back to his right. Never did I ever think that Hitler would go viral and have more subscribers than me. But you know, there was no questions in our mind that we were buying this book. We literally looked at each other, cry laughed, and then went and bought it. And oh my god, it's it. I'm gonna do a review of it, but I'm trying to articulate the review because it's a very touchy topic and I've got to word it right. But it's very political uh, and touches on some serious issues, but it's so funny. It's so funny. So funny. I have got that kind of sense. I have got that kind of sense of humour. Like, I find Family Guy and funny and I always win Cards Against Humanity. So I've got the kind of like, ha ha, ha ha, ooh, probably shouldn't have laughed at that, but it was funny. Kind of sense of humour. Then, Penguin, really cool. 80 years of Penguin, awesome. Like, so cool. Uh, are doing these kind of little black classics for the 80 years. There's 80 of them and they are 80p um, and they are numbered. And I want them all because they're numbered, so I want to collect them, but obviously that'll be like 80 pounds and um, I, uh, I'm not rich. Um, and I got aphorisms on love and hate and the communist manifesto. Karl Marx was the philosopher that I did a lot about when I was in A-level, so I kind of am familiar with his works. So I'm looking forward to reading this one and also this one as well. And then finally, my last book is also a non-fiction book and that's John Ronson's The Psychopath Test. Finding out kind of more about what goes on in the brains of psychopaths and why like, he talks to psychopaths and finds out how, what, has happened to their lives and how they've been affected and all that kind of stuff it sounds really interesting so yes that was all the books oh no no i haven't kindle kindle i got the first and second book in the shadow hunter that's not yeah i got the first and second book in the shadow hunter academy series oh my god can sam declare and sarah reese brennan have done a companion series to the mortal instruments to set out so you have only fire and it's about simon and revolving around what he's doing now Oh my god, so excited when I found this. I love getting more of a view into their lives and more of their lives and finding out what happened next because they're my favourite characters, they're my, it's my favourite series so it's so cool to be able to see more of them and I, oh it's so exciting. So yes, that really is the final every book that I've got recently. I hope that you guys liked this haul. What books have you got recently? Recommend me them because you know, need more, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Don't buy enough as it is. <clears throat> Thank you guys for watching, I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you soon. Bye!